sponsored by EA. Challenge everything. Modern Sims has me feeling some ways. If you've seen my recent video about Sims 4 seasonal roadmaps, you'll know what I mean. Lately, I've been craving a retro Sims experience that I could only get when I was younger. But how does that hold up in 2024? For those of you who might be a bit too young to have experienced this, buckle your seatbelts, okay? Because today we are talking about The Sims. Something or whatever the title is, insert the title here. For a long time now, I've wanted to do a nostalgic look at the older Sims titles, but not one of the main PC games. There are so many different Sims titles that were released on old consoles throughout the years. Games like Sims Medieval, Sims 2 on DS, Sims Life Stories, The Herbs, Sims Online, and My Sims. And yeah, some of those were released on PC too. I was just listing out titles at that point. You know what I mean, Jellybee? But how do these games hold up nowadays? Probably not well, but that's, that's the, the fun, fun part. part. When I was younger, I loved Sims Bustin' Out. We had it on the GameCube and my three brothers and I would spend hours playing this game or watching someone else play. It had the four of us in a chokehold for a while. Then, like any other video game, we stopped playing it. Well, it's been over two decades since the game was released and I think it's time to play it again. Let me quickly interrupt this video to say something about the new Sims 4 kits. They're not worth your money. However, it's worth it when EA gives it away for free. EA has graciously given me codes for the castle and goth kits to give away. To enter the giveaway, comment with what kit you would want. In this video's comment section, I'll select two winners on February the 7th. Okay, back to busting out on the Steam Deck. Sims Bustin' Out was released in December of 2003 in North America and Europe for Game Boy Advance, GameCube, PS2, and Xbox. It was later released in February of 2004 for those consoles in Australia and Japan. Then again for Engage in May of 2004 for North America, Europe, and Japan. It was the first Sims title not to be released on Windows PC. The game was well received on all platforms. Essentially, the game focused on Malcolm Landgrab going through his neighborhood, stealing items in return for unpaid rent. Yes, the Landgrabs were ass even back then. Your goal in this game was to complete all of the career tracks, or at least one, unlock and buy back everyone's possessions, and become rich enough to somehow evict Malcolm from his mansion so your sim can move in. In hindsight, this is wild. This is like eating the rich, but in a way where you're becoming what you eat. It's like, let's save the town by becoming so rich the rich villain gets screwed. Honestly though, if your sim became rich, that doesn't take away Malcolm's fortune. So I want someone to explain this logic to me and how it works. <laughs> because that, <laughs> no, that's not how it would work in real life. Anywho, the game is similar to previous Sim titles, aside from the objectives and storyline. In fact, it features several items from the Sims expansion packs, like Living Large, House Party, Hot Date, and Superstar. There are two modes for the game, one for the storyline and a free play mode. The PlayStation 2 version also once had the option to play online. Sadly, this online mode was shut down on August 1st, 2008, the same day The Sims Online shut down. Rip. The Game Boy Advance and Engage had their own storylines. The Game Boy Advance and the Nintendo DS version of The Herbs, Sims in the City, served as a sequel to this version. In this story mode, you're in Sim Valley for the summer holiday. Similar to the other one, it was objective based, but instead of unlocking the items, you had to complete tasks to unlock new houses. You can also control your sims directly using the Game Boy's directional pad. There were many games featured that were progressively unlocked as you played and completed tasks. For Engage, you can collect three classic games, like Snake, and you can play it on the sims mobile phone. Enough about that though, we're going to be playing Bustin' Out like Glob intended us to, on GameCube. Simulated on my Steam Deck. I'm not biased at all. I want to start off by saying how much I wanted to love this game. Why does it seem like I had an easier time with it when I was an actual child versus now? These sims are hard to maintain. Everything takes too long to fulfill and the game doesn't spell out what exactly needs to be done, which is fine. I'm fine with it. It's all pretty straightforward anyways. The biggest issue for me was the needs. Every time I thought, hey, I'm getting back on track. I wasn't getting back on track. Mm-mm. Nope. I was not. It got to the point where I googled cheats for this game, but decided, against my better judgment, to not utilize those. The goals were pretty easy, unless you're failing at taking care of your sim's needs, which I clearly was. 
Another thing I found annoying was the other Sims in the game. Oh my glob. Were they ever annoying? It felt like every two seconds a dialogue box would pop up with them saying something frustrating to me. Why aren't I getting new gym memberships? I thought you were here to help us. We're going to be two popular sims, dude. Why aren't you having any fun? What stinks? Is that you? I get it. I'm not completing the goals that quickly. And my needs are, well, I'm in the red. Let me just fulfill my needs so I can function as a normal sim. Please, leave me alone. I do like the nostalgia that came along with this game. Not only am I reliving the days when I played Bustin' Out, I'm also reliving my Sims 1 days to an extent. It was nice. It reminded me of a simpler time, not only for the Sims franchise, but for my life in general. The one thing I loved most about this experience was being able to play it anywhere. I wasn't tied to my computer. I could play it on the couch downstairs, in bed, in my car, walking the dog, at the park, at Tim Hortons, anywhere. I could play it anywhere. Now, this is only because I'm using a Steam Deck to play the game. If you emulate Boston Out on your phone or another handheld device, then you can experience a similar thing, and I highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. It's really awesome. How does this compare to the average Sims experience in 2024? It's similar, yet at the same time, it's worlds apart. Taking care of your Sim is pretty much the same experience. We got their multiple needs and you have to keep those in the green so the Sim is in the green and then you can accomplish things like achieving promotions at work. There are no emotions in this game and it's kind of like a win because I don't think that would have helped. The game is a little bit too difficult to play if that was included as well. Social interactions are similar. They're not divided up into negative and positive interactions. However, it does become clear which ones you should and shouldn't do, depending on what outcome you want. Yeah, I was doing a lot of rude things to a lot of people before realizing, hey, maybe some people don't like it when they pull my finger and I fart. Maybe it's not for them. They don't like it. The storyline and goals are great. Could it be a better storyline? Sure. Could there be better goals? Heck yeah. Despite that, the fact that these are included is awesome. And you also have to remember what year this came out. It was 2003, 2004. This is pretty big. This is a big deal. Just having these really sets it apart from the main Sims games. It's different. It's fun to play through. There's also some playthrough potential since there are various endings, depending on what career you choose and you end with. To be honest, the endings are all very similar, but if you want to complete the whole game and you want to do it like that, be my guest. All in all, I think this is a great game to play casually on a device like this. I'm pretty happy with the overall experience and I recommend it. It's fun to look back on past Sims titles and be able to enjoy them in present day. If you enjoyed this video format and you want to see more like this, please let me know in the comments. It helps me figure out what videos are worth creating. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you've been doing well and you're staying happy, healthy, and hydrated. I like casually playing this game with you. So if y'all liked it too, let's do this again, okay? Until next time, bye!